I believe that solar energy has the potential to transform the world. It can reduce global warming, make a huge impact on our economy, and make our energy supply and our nation more secure. So, what is it that's holding it back? Some of it is that big infrastructure changes just take time, and some of it is economic inertia, but most of it is shortcomings in our technology. One thing is that so far we haven't come up with a really good way to control sunlight. Right now, there are just two common approaches. In the first, there's really no control. We just intercept the raw sunlight directly with solar cells. In the other, we use various kinds of mechanisms to concentrate the sunlight, usually involving large arrays of mechanically driven mirrors. Actually, for any given area, it's the direct method that gathers the most sunlight because it fills the area, but it converts sunlight with low efficiency. It doesn't even come close to using the full potential of the sunlight. In contrast, concentrating methods do convert light more efficiently, but the mechanisms get in the way of the light. They can't fill the area because collectors have to be spaced far apart to avoid shadowing each other. As much as 90% of the light falls on the ground, and the installations take up a huge amount of space. And what's more, intense sunlight, heat, and the exposed equipment may endanger wildlife and the environment. But the main focus of this video is the compromise between being more effective at sunlight collection or more effective at its conversion to electricity. Today, you no longer need to compromise. I'm gonna show you something called digital glass that can give you the best of both worlds. It can fill an area, intercept all the light, and concentrate it for high efficiency. And it does this without the mechanisms that get in the way. What's more, it can do this not just at the huge scale of a utility power plant, but also in tight places where space is precious, like a rooftop in a city. Digital glass will provide unprecedented directional control over sunlight without mechanical parts that can wear out. It will be able to concentrate sunlight on any kind of receiver, from a simple photovoltaic cell to the most advanced thermal receivers. It opens new doors for all kinds of systems, including those that can store energy and produce power even after the sun goes down. Digital glass will allow us to produce five to 10 times as much energy from a given area as today's concentrating solar plants. And in photovoltaic systems, digital glass can produce the same output using just one-tenth of the PV material. Now let's look a little deeper. How does it work? The physics is surprisingly simple. Under the right conditions, an optical fluid can make an object like this plastic rod invisible. Then, to switch over and make the object visible, you remove fluid. This digital, on or off, optical switching can be put to work using microfluidics, which moves fluid through tiny channels on scales as small as just a few microns. Inside a transparent block, we can reveal or hide channels. And these channels become digitally controlled mirrors. This is the basis of digital glass. These variable mirrors can steer beams of light. They can even bend it along a curve with high precision and reliability. And unlike mechanically actuated mirrors, these fluids will not wear out. For clarity, I'm showing you how this works using this laboratory prototype. In production, a panel of digital glass will contain thousands of these mirror channels. To track the path of the sun each day, optical fluid will progressively extend the mirrors, then retract them again for the start of the next day. Although these internal mirrors are constantly moving with the sun, the panel itself stays stationary. It can be mounted on a simple frame with no moving parts. The panels can fill an area from edge to edge with no need for non-productive buffer zones. This can make harvesting solar energy much more efficient. For example, here's one of today's solar arrays, having 10 rows, each with 10 solar panels. We can achieve the same power output with just one row of panels by making use of digital glass. The system both collects more sunlight and concentrates it to use the full capacity of the cells. We can also scale this up to the size of a football field and concentrate sunlight directly onto a power plant's thermal receiver. The sunlight is intense enough to heat molten salt to over 700 degrees Celsius. As the sun moves, each point across the entire surface of the digital glass steers the sunlight 
eliminating the need for thousands of mechanical trackers that were used in the past. Construction is far simpler, maintenance is greatly reduced, more energy is collected from a given area, the enclosure protects wildlife and the environment, and the overall cost can be just a fraction of what is spent today. Here's another advantage. The salt can be stored in its molten form, and that stored heat can be used to continue generating electricity without interruption, even after the sun goes down. In this way, digital glass will contribute to overcoming yet another of the basic challenges of solar energy. How to keep the power on through the night. Energy time shifting. These are some examples of what we're aiming for with microfluidic light steering and digital glass. Having demonstrated the core technologies in the laboratory, we're now refining them and creating cost-effective fabrication. We've teamed up with Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories in order to develop something called large area projection microstereolithography, an advanced form of 3D printing specifically for our application. Today, we're actively seeking early stage hardware development funding, strategic partners, and talented people to join our team. So, if you believe, like I do, that solar energy is the most important energy source for our future, and if you want to learn more about digital glass and microfluidic light steering, then contact Giant Leap Solar to learn more on how you can be part of the solar energy revolution.